Hello there, this is Irv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to look at how you go from this raw piece of Bethlehem olive wood, or it could be a piece of walnut or cherry or acrylic, to a finished wine stopper only limited by your imagination. Okay, stay tuned and let's learn something together. To produce a wine stopper on a lathe, in my case I'm using a very small pen lathe called a pen pail lathe that we'll look at together, you need to start with a block of wood. This is a block of wood that's two inches by two inches by two inches. And then I'm going to take and drill a hole into the center of the wood. Once again, the way we find the center of a block of wood is by drawing lines across the diagonal where they intersect is the center. I'll then use a tap a wood tap that will, when screwed into the hole, will cut threads into the hole. So this will then be a threaded hole. That threaded hole, I will screw into this chuck. This is a chuck that will mount on my lathe. And once it's mounted on the block of wood, this will allow me to turn this block of wood. When I'm done turning the block of wood, I'll unscrew it and I will screw in a wine bottle stopper, and these come in different materials and different colors, into that hole I just produced, finish polishing it, and I will have a beautiful wine stopper. Now this wine stopper was made from a composite piece of wood that's made that you pre-purchase with many different layers of colored dyed woods. This was also made from a composite piece of wood. And this, I believe, is just a piece of walnut. Okay, let's go to the drill press. We will drill a hole, tap that hole, and get started to turn our wine stopper today. Okay, we're here at the drill press. I have the block of wood in a vise, um, and that vise is then clamped to the bed of the drill press. Um, safety first, um, I uh, wear glasses. So in this particular case, I'm not going to put on separate um, safety glasses, but you do need your eyes to be protected. We will power on the drill bread and we will slowly lower it into the block of wood. Let me do this from the side here so that hopefully you can see a bit of this. down to the mark. And that's all that's required there. Okay, now I've pushed the drill press back a bit on my bench, and I have a hole in this block of wood, and I'm going to take and tap that by just screwing this tap into that hole. Um, it is best to only go down once, not to go back up and down, because we want to cut the threads as cleanly as possible. Okay, we should get down to the end here, and now we should be able to back this out. Okay. Now... We have a tapped hole here, and we can screw in the chuck that we're going to use to hold this on the drill press. Now, very often people will cut off the corners of these blocks of wood before they start turning them. And in fact, I'm going to pause for a minute and do that. I find it's easier to just take this to a sander and sand off these corners. The reason you do that is so it doesn't catch when you start carving uh, your stock. So I'm going to back this off. We will take this out. Okay, I've remounted my block of olive wood in my lathe. I turned it by hand to make sure it appears stable. I'll tighten this just a little bit. Now I'm going to have my lathe all the way on the slowest speed. I will turn it on and slowly turn it on to see how this goes. 
Now, since it is not yet round, you would expect some vibration. I'm getting very, very little vibration, primarily because I have the tapped hole directly in the center, and I have a tailstock pressing it into the powered end. Now, there is some debate in the industry about whether you should do your rough cutting with a square cutter or a round cutter. Um, I find a round cutter works better for me. So I'm going to begin carving out this into a round shape. Um, my voice is going to get a little muffled because in addition to uh, protective glasses, I'm now going to put on a protected mask because this does produce quite a bit of product. Okay, now that I have a rough round shape, I need some idea of what dimensions I want to use for this, and I will mark those on here. So I like this particular shape and size, so I'll mark where the end is here, and I'll mark where the little lip is here, so that I have two reference points for the rest of the work. Okay, you'll see that we're starting to create a shape here. Um, and we can look at the dimensions of this using a caliper. We can take a caliper here. And get the approximate dimensions here. And we'll screw that down. And once again, every wine stopper is unique doesn't have to be identical. And then we'll know when we've gone far enough when this will fit over that. Okay, it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to take off my tool rest put aside my chisels, and we'll use sandpaper to finish this off. So we're gonna start with some 150 grit sandpaper and a much slower speed, just to smooth this out a little bit. Okay, now that we have the shape, pretty much what we're looking for, I'm going to take a handsaw and I'm going to cut off the end here. And then we will be able to sand that end also. Get a nice finish on the end there. And once I get done with 320, I'm going to apply some CA glue, a couple of coats. I'll let that soak into the cracks. Okay, this looks actually quite beautiful. So now let me get some CA glue. Okay, I'm using Stickfast CA. It's a special uh, woodworker's uh, CA formulation. I'm using the thin version. I do have a glove on. I really don't like getting... CA glove, CA glue on my hands. I'm going to put a drop on here. I do have uh, goggles on. And let's start up the lathe and apply it to this. And 
Now I will continue with a third coat. Now let's check to make sure that's dry and it feels relatively smooth. You can see this really is quite a nice finish. So now what we're going to do is a bit counterintuitive. I'm going to take some 800 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand it down again. Okay, now we're going to use this micro mesh, which comes in 1500 to 12,000 grit. That means basically it's very fine sandpaper. We do make wet this a bit, and then we use it to sand while wet. Now effectively what we've done here is we've put a coating of thin plastic on this uh, piece of wood that's going to protect it and also provide a surface that we can uh, sand to get to a very fine texture. Now we're going to take two more steps here. You can see this is actually very nice and smooth and shiny now. But we're gonna take two more steps. The first is we're gonna apply some Ultra Shine, which is a Turner's Wax and Polish. Um, this will help further polish and brighten this wood. This is a really remarkable product. Comes out of Australia. First you apply it fairly liberally, then you put pressure on it, running at a medium speed, until you feel a little bit of warmth, and that's going to create the chemical heat reaction that's going to polish this up. Can we get this everywhere? Because this wax is going to protect this a bit. Then we turn it to the dry side. And then the final treatment we're going to put on here is a bit of, it's sort of like car polish. And it's called One Step Plastic Polish. And remember, we use CA glue on here. So we have sort of a plasticized finish. Okay, I'm going to turn off the exhaust fan now. We're done with the CA glue. Okay, I'm going to take and unscrew this from the lathe. And we will take this back to our workbench and finish it off and finish off the video. Okay, we're back at the workbench. There's sawdust everywhere from turning this uh, wine bottle stopper. And uh, in, in total, we spent about an hour between preparing it, drilling a hole, and then finishing it. Because this is olive wood, there are natural cracks often in the wood. We chose to seal this wood with CA glue. That's just super glue, except it's a wood formulation that's quite a bit stronger than what you'd get in the drugstore. And then we polished it to a nice finish. We're going to unscrew it from the chuck and put a drop of CA glue into the threads. A couple drops in there. And that will ensure that when this is screwed together all of the way, it stays screwed together. And here we go. Screw this in. It's threading in very nicely. I want to make sure it gets all the way to the base, and it does. It fits perfectly because we were careful to take and um, carve the base, turn the base down to the diameter of the chuck. And so in about an hour, let's say an hour and a half tops, you can make a beautiful gift. Uh, these, if you look on eBay, these sell from anywhere from $20 to $50, depending on what metal is used for the base, depending on what wood is used for the top. But more importantly, you've made something yourself with your own hands. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That's very important. It helps YouTube know to show this video to other people. Uh, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and thanks again. Let's continue learning things together.